the extent that Jeremy Hammond is responsible for those five million emails, he did something entirely necessary. Stop projecting this. If the U.S. was a country that was actually governed in accordance with the rule of law, then I would be the first to oppose any crime against any company, including hackers. But the fact of the matter is that this is not a country governed by the rule of law. We love you! We, we love, love you. you! We all love you, Jeremy! My name is Barrett Brown, <clears throat> and I've been waiting for this day for about six months. In a way, I've been waiting for this day since I was seven years old. On March 5th, I received communication from a certain individual saying that I was going to be raided the next day at my home. They go to his house, his apartment, and he had spent the night at his mom's house. You know, I just go to my mom's house and sleep over there sometimes. We've been very close. Next morning, I woke up at 6.30 by my mom. She's scared. I go downstairs. There's two FBI agents. One is named Robert Smith. He is a FBI cybercrime fellow. They say, okay, we've raided your house, your apartment. Uh, do you have any laptops here you'd like to give us? And I said, no, I don't have any laptops here you'd like to give us. So they get another warrant for his mother's house and uh, find the laptop. Then they charge his mother with obstruction of justice. When I was seven years old, I first heard the term FBI. My parents were fighting a lot. That My dad would sometimes get angry and throw things at my mom. And part of the reason for that was because my dad was being indicted by the FBI. I went from living in a nice house in Highland Park, one of the nicest communities in America, to living in a uh, two-bedroom apartment with my mom and grandma and sharing a bed with my mom for the next year when I was in third grade. They'd gone after his father and bankrupted his father. And, and his father was eventually found innocent and apologized to by the court. So basically, the FBI ruined his family. When I was in the backyard, you know, I remember I heard the Mexican FBI agent bring you one back in and said, oh yeah, the bad guy's back here. It was that day I realized I'm a bad guy. You know what, I had no idea beforehand, you know. And even now, I still have trouble really sort of internalizing that. But if the FBI says that it must be true, and from now on, I am a bad guy. So it's kind of like a quad, and everybody in the apartment complex can hear this man ranting against the FBI on the balcony. And I'm getting a little bit concerned, but I also want him to have his, because he, you know, he, he's very brown. He says crazy stuff in the evening. We sit in the tiny chat, just joking around. I'm not wearing a shirt. People like us who are totally fat can do that. Hey, can you tell me if you're a gift or not? She said shit. I swear to God, she said shit the other day. It was crazy. <laughs> and the picture right. on her okay. fucking Twitter is the same person. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure okay. it's a real person. Oh my God. Look, you're pretty. You don't have to really think I'm a gift. It's like super passionate about this argument. <laughs> <laughs> If you're in the place getting raided, okay, you don't know anything because all of a sudden your utilities go out. Um, and the utilities go out because the concussion, they're concerned that the concussion grenades might start a fire. So they don't want the gas or electricity running, okay. And none of the stuff you see on television where, you know, they 
go with at the door with the battering ram. No, that door comes down in one blow. Okay, and you're down on the floor, okay, with one of these macho jerks pointing an assault rifle at your head, swearing at you and telling you to freeze or he's going to blow your fucking brains out. The second agent came around in his camo with his gun, and he looked at me as if he didn't know there would be a girl there. Barrett's mother came over. She sees Barrett Brown V, and then the ampersand over and over and over again on Twitter. Barrett Brown Band is a way that people communicate that somebody has been arrested. He's talking shit. There's no crime against talking shit. But maybe there is now. Robert Smith's life is over. So when I say his life is over, I don't say I'm going to go kill him. But I'm going to ruin his life and look into his fucking kids. How do you like them apples? What kind of threat ends with how do you like them apples? It's like, it's like, like from like 1840 or something like that. If it was just threatening the agent and that's all he was being charged with, I wouldn't even care about this case. Let him and Special Agent Robert Smith go out back and duke it out, or let Special Agent Smith beat him up, or whatever he has to do. The second indictment comes, and then it's like a fucking kick in the, in the, in the gut. All these guys are doing are trying to, you know, put the fear in him, trying to pressure him to, you know, flip. Barrett's such a stubborn asshole that he's never going to flip. Their claim is that he took a link, copied it. It's journalistically important to get the client list. Pasted it into the Project PM chat room, and in that one move, produced criminal exposure for himself. The Barrett Brown case is another one of these seminal cases, and the, uh, the government wants to send a very chilling message. It's fundamentally a First Amendment case. How dare you hold up the mirror to us? They called Project PM a, like, a criminal organization, and that's, that's what people freaked out about, because there were a whole bunch of people hung out on that server, or at that wiki, and like, wait, this is a criminal... Co I think they're after who? who is anyone else? Any other names to put on our list of people to watch? The tingly feelings of like paranoia crawling up my spine like a spider, they're there for a reason. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. So Jeremy Hammond did the hack 10 years at this point. Who's the guy that's looking at 105 years at this point? It's Barrett Brown. And wh what's the difference? He's disseminating the information. He's doing something more dangerous than what Jeremy did. Here's the message it sends from the government to the hacktivists who are getting great coverage and are becoming folk heroes through the press. Don't talk to the press because we're going to get their computers and we're going to get their sources and we're going to get you through that. To the press who are covering the hacktivists, don't cover these hacktivists because we're going to get you. <laughs> Here's what I want. One, I'm no longer your bitch. Two, all of my charges are dropped. Three, all of Barrett Brown's charges are dropped. That's up to the U.S. Attorney. Figure it out. Hector Xavier Monsegur was responsible for the arrest of Jeremy Hammond and other anonymous and LawSec members. Sources say he began cooperating with the FBI. I'm the de facto leader of a movement. Screaming hack the planet back in 99. Activism in its prime. Global hell had the dot mill. It, it, like, I felt like my, my brains had been blown out. Like it was the last scene of The Departed. The FBI arrests Sabu and they turn him within a day, and they have him back on the internet within two days. This isn't like some guy going undercover in the Gambino crime family in person for years. None of us had ever met him before. He was just this 
guy we knew from the internet. He talks the talk so forcefully with that kind of New York personality. You know, we are doing the right thing for the people. We are building this re anew from the ground up. We are taking down the ugly, evil, capitalist, you know, imperial machinery. And we are building it back up with our own hands, my brother, he says. Looking at Sabu's interactions with reporters during the time that he was an FBI informant, Sabu could have easily just told the reporter, like, no, I don't want to talk to you, go away. But that's not what he did. He engaged in like an hour and a half long conversation and then screen capped it and handed that information over to the FBI. That's not a free press. The government is, has journalists under surveillance. Do you think the government's targeting you? I hope not. <laughs> I hope I'm not. <laughs> Shit. Everybody's paranoia is just through the fucking roof. Wait a sec. If he was working for the FBI, from that moment in June to this moment now, they didn't delete his timeline. They didn't try to hide any of that stuff. You want to interview? Send a print message to the nickname Sabu. Sabu and Jeremy were partners in crime. They were the digital Bonnie and Clyde, if you will. <laughs> Except one of them is working for the FBI the whole time. The FBI is operating in sort of a new theater, which is, is online. The government likes to use these hyperbolic terms referring to cyber warfare, cyber weapons. <laughs> fed by proxy through Cebu, were giving Jeremy the zero days to get into these websites. In order to, say, entrap a terrorist, they would sell him fake explosives. But instead of giving him fake explosives, the zero days are real. In the hacker world, you either get in or you don't get in. There's no fake hack. They didn't fake, it, it wouldn't be a crime if it was a fake hack. Drive it, dude. She belated him. The amount of cooperation was truly extraordinary. And it was just amazing. She just kept saying it over and over. It was truly extraordinary. Truly extraordinary. And, you know, and I gotta say, too, I don't know what I would have done in his position. I really don't. Uh, you know, it's a walk a mile in his shoes to understand it. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be mad, though. The amount of truly extraordinary...